Hello. Today we are going to make a cashew port. I would call this tutorial cashew port playing with shapes. Our cashew port has an unusual shape. Why unusual? Let's have a look. I've been collecting interesting ideas for quite a while, so once I've come across an unusual shape of a bowl woven of some kind of veneer. So I felt like trying to make it apply in our technique of paper tubes. For some reason this bowl has made me think of a cashew pour for flowers. It gets woven based on a square. I mean that at first you have to weave a square, after which you shape a square like this. What's good about this shape is that it is original looking and at the same time easy to make. There are also some disadvantages. You cannot put several ports like this in a row because they occupy too much space. But I believe they are good to use as an original and bright spot in your interior. As usual, I've tried this shape on several articles. I've made a few conclusions. First of all, I didn't want to weave tight, I felt like weaving open work. Lamp shades with wool have inspired me to collect lace patterns. So this time I'd like to continue the topic, but apply it to a different shape. At first I wanted my cashew port to be very light and very airy. However, the idea has proven to be failed. I continue sharing my failures with you because I believe that error correction is one of the most effective ways of teaching. When I woven the web, I liked the way it looks. However, when I started shaping it, I've noticed that the tubes break while bent. So I've given up to air lace applied to cashew ports and chosen denser type of lace. This latest white article has appealed to me most of all with its dense lace. Well, actually it's not a lace, but rather printed cotton woven rather loose. After I'd making cashew ports in different color schemes, these green and brown ones have been ordered to match the interior of similar colors. So today we are going to weave my fourth green and brown cashew port. A few words about tubes. Surely, the longer the tubes are, the easier it is to work with them. These two ports have been woven with long newspaper stripes. This one has been woven with regular tubes, but I've lengthened them. Just standard tubes, but lancet. These ones are made of newspapers, because it is the very color I need, and I do have some tubes of the required color in store, I've decided to lancet the short tubes. I've done with the help of dragon glue. I prefer applying this very glue to the works that are supposed to be reshaped a lot. If you connect the tubes with the help of school glue, they can break. 
Dragon Glue can stand strong attention and curves. What else do I use? Such a device made of a piece of cardboard from a shoe box. I've lined it in order to direct my tubes. Both lengthwise and crosswise. The intervals between the lines are standard. I don't draw a line for each separate tube, I just draw them for guidance. As usual, I don't like making identical articles. In this port I had two brown tubes and two green ones in tones. This time I've prepared four green ones and four brown ones. I fixed the tubes with the help of binder clips. As well you can use clothes pins. Well, actually you can stick them with the help of construction tape. But because I'm going to continue working with these steels afterwards, lifting them. It's more convenient using binder or closing clips. So I bent and fixed the tubes. Please notice that I've left a tail here because I will need it in further work. You will see what I need it for. The intervals between the tubes are about half a centimeter, about a quarter of an inch. In order to keep the pattern, I take four brown tubes at first. Here there are four brown tubes at the beginning of the row, so I take four brown working tubes as well. For this article I've chosen printed cotton weave as follows. In front of one, behind one. In our case, the denser the web is, the better it acts while bent. So we don't need any particular pattern. I insert a tube with the help of a ruler. And with the help of a ruler I draw it. The next stage. With the help of a ruler, the poles change places. The ones that used to be up come down and vice versa. Our goal is weaving a smooth web. A ruler is very helpful. Now insert a tube and draw it. I didn't moisten the tubes on purpose, I'm going to moisten them later. It is important to avoid bending and breaking of tubes at this stage. A ruler helps a lot, besides you help yourself with your fingers. At the same time you place a working tube where it is supposed to be and direct the poles. Try to shape smooth squares while weaving. The next step. Continue like this up to the required size. Our goal is to decorate plain looking flower pots, so the size of a kesha pot depends on the size of a pot.
the third brown tube. Finish weaving a cloth. The last row. The size of my cloth woven is 25 by 25 centimeters, which is about 10 inches. Insert the last tube. My squares are a bit prolonged. Rectangles rather than squares. Anyway, follow the required size. Don't pay attention to a number of tubes involved. It's hard to make squares absolutely identical. So, got it. 25 by 25. The next stage. Fix the square with the help of a regular two-tube rope. This time I need wet tubes, so I've moisturized them beforehand. The intervals between the tubes are very short, so I hug two poles at a time. Our goal is just fixing the form to keep the tubes from sliding out later while shaping a bowl. So the edges have to be treated and fixed. A regular two tube rope. I personally hug two poles at a time, but it's up to you. You don't necessarily have to shape a corner. We are going to weave two rows only. The corners are supposed to be adjoined afterwards. It seems high time to lengthen. Corner is not the best point to lengthen, but let's insert the tube deep. And this way, weave in the technique of a rope up to the end of the rope. 